Okay, so everyone at some point has stumbled across a top 10 list of things that turn women off. Usually it's in a magazine, blog post, or BuzzFeed article. And those are fun, but those are G-rated. If you really wanna know what makes women lose interest in men, you have to go to Reddit. And as fate would have it, the other day while browsing r slash askwomen, as I do most Sunday mornings, I stumbled across a thread titled, Ladies, what made you lose interest in your crush and why? What I discovered was fascinating, revolutionary even. And I knew at that moment that I had to share it with you guys. So without further ado, here are the top 10 things that make women lose interest in men according to Reddit. Okay, let's start from the bottom and work our way to number one. Number 10, Instagram is a red flag. He followed IG models and OnlyFans girls. So among all of the social platforms, Instagram is unique in that we tend to follow accounts that are consistent with the themes that most interest us. Whether that be memes, philosophers, UFC fighters, or that sweet, sweet ass. A Spanish philosopher, Jose Ortega Gasset, once famously remarked, tell me what you pay attention to and I'll tell you who you are. And so when a guy's Instagram is loaded with models and OnlyFans girls, it's a pretty good indication that his interests are skewed more towards sexual and less towards intellectual, which is a major red flag for a quality woman. Now you have to be careful here because the solution isn't simply to just not follow these accounts because that doesn't solve the root problem. As Carl Jung points out, what you deny, you submit. What you accept transforms you. Accept that you're sexually attracted to these sorts of things. We all are. Now understand the positive and negative implications of all of this and then use that information to choose the accounts that you want to follow. Number nine, poor hygiene and messy went to his house to realize it was really dirty and his personal hygiene was lacking. That was it. How can you think of kissing someone who may not brush their teeth and doesn't mind their body? There's nothing more repulsive to a woman than poor hygiene. Smelly breath, stinky armpits, and, and this all gets multiplied if you combine that with a messy car or a dirty room. Now here's the thing, most guys who suffer from bad hygiene do so because they're just completely unaware of it. And so the formula for good hygiene is actually really simple. Shower every morning, sometimes in the afternoon, especially if you sweat in any way. And Invest in a good underarm deodorant, ideally a magnesium deodorant, which is long lasting and chemical free. Brush your teeth two to three times a day, paying special attention to your tongue. Invest in a high quality cologne and change your shirt every day, jeans once every one or two days. As for your environment, just remember that messy out here usually means messy up here. Number eight, two into sports. He got excessively angry about a football loss. That night, I dreamt he called me a stupid bitch, and I knew it was time to end it. Fuck! Come on! Mahomes looking to flip, takes it in for the touchdown! Fuck! So there are three really interesting elements at play here. The first is that in general, women are less into sports than men. The studies that show this generally highlight gender differences from an evolutionary biology perspective. The second, and this should be obvious, has to do with common interest. If one person in the relationship has an extreme interest in something that the other person has absolutely no interest in or worse, an aversion to, then of course this could lead to compatibility issues. But the third, and perhaps the most interesting element, is that most guys who are overly into sports tend to be complete losers. Someone whose life and gender general mood revolve around something external and completely uncontrollable, as is the case with any sports team, probably doesn't have much going on in their life. Number seven, idolizes other men. He went to a Jordan Peterson talk and then took a picture with him and wrote, met my hero. Ew. Um, do me a favor, just uh, give me two, two seconds and we're gonna change. All right, uh, let's go. <laughs> uh, 
I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, there are two main things at play here. The first is that women want a, a man, not a child. Generally speaking, a man-child is someone who is unreliable, uh, reacts poorly to criticism, behaves like a frat boy, always gives excuses instead of owning up to their own mistakes, is disorganized, constant financial problems, etc. So if you possess some or all of these qualities and you worship a man to the extent that you outsource all of your beliefs and thoughts to them, well, you can understand how this would be perceived by a woman as unattractive, childish behavior. Now, on the other hand, if you have strong models, male or female, who positively influence you without directly substituting your own evolving thought processes and philosophical positions, then from what I can tell at least, that's not only fine, it's healthy and attractive. Number six, negging. He implied I got a great job offer because of my looks, rather than my skills and 15 years of experience. He meant it as a compliment, but it was negging. No coming back from that. So this is among the more infamous pickup techniques. And while I can't deny that it does work, uh, it's a pathetic strategy normally employed by low quality men. The term negging was originally coined by Eric von Markovic, a controversial seduction guru very similar to the character Tom Cruise played in the 1999 film Magnolia. Eric defined negging as a negative comment made with subtlety that lowers the guard of a target and leads them to question their own value, thus increasing your relative value. In other words, it's when you subtly disqualify the other person while making it seem like you're praising them. Examples include, nice nails, are they real? No? Oh, well, they look nice anyway. I don't normally date chubby girls, but you carry it well. All of your guy friends are only friends with you because they want to have sex with you. Not me though, uh, not that you're unattractive, it's just that I'm not that into you. Listen, uh, if you're after a quality girl, uh, instead of trying to lower their quality, I, I found it to be a much better investment of time to just focus on increasing your own quality. Number five, bad eating habits. He smacks when he eats. Okay, so imagine taking a shit directly in front of a woman that you're on a date with. Now, while I won't say that it's the same thing as chewing with your mouth open, I will say that they're both things that nobody wants to see. Both sexes have what's called proper etiquette, which for men and women include chewing with your mouth closed. Bonus points for not holding your fork like a three-year-old and knowing to place a napkin on your lap at fancier restaurants. Number four, poor grammar. He wrote there instead of they are on a Facebook status. In a 2016 Match.com survey of over 5,500 single Americans, 39% indicated that grammar was even more important than how their crush smiled or dressed. In a more recent survey, the dating site Zeusk found that two thirds of women would not date a guy with poor grammar. Not only does it correlate to low intelligence, but from my experience, a guy who hasn't made the effort to learn how to distinguish between there, there, and there is unlikely to make the effort to improve in other areas. Number three, bad kisser. Our first kiss. I'd been crushing on this guy for a year at least, and finally it happened. And it's still one of the worst kisses of my life. According to Susan Hughes, a psychologist from Albright College in Pennsylvania, women tend to use kissing to create a bond with their partners and to assess them as potential mates. Meanwhile, men use kissing as a means to an end. That end being sex, of course. In a study that Hughes conducted, which included 1,000 males and females, women overwhelmingly indicated that a bad kiss was a deal breaker, whereas for men, it wasn't. Additionally, the study observed that men liked significantly wetter kisses, which psychologists hypothesize is because males perceive a greater wetness or salivary exchange during a kiss as an index of the female's sexual arousal slash receptivity, similar to the act of sexual intercourse. So in summary, when it comes to kissing, rather than going in on a woman like one of those sandworms from Dune, uh, try to treat it like a dance. If she's kissing slowly, kiss slowly. If she's trying to pick food out of your stomach with her tongue, then yeah, you can be more aggressive. Number two, hot and cold. Playing hot and cold. So this is actually one of those things that both sexes really struggle with understanding, and it's actually really simple. If a guy is hot and cold with a girl, 
she's just not that into her. He's probably hot when he's horny, lonely, or bored, and then he becomes cold again shortly after he's satisfied whatever need he was looking to have fulfilled with the woman. And guys, if you're being hot and cold with a girl, you're not into her, so just grow up. <laughs> Number one being boring. Actually hearing them talk for long periods of time, I completely zoned out because it was so boring. Sometimes we project mystery where there is none. So this was the number one reason that women lost interest in their crush. And rather than focusing on why this happened, which I'd probably need an entire video to explain, let's just focus on the solution, which is actually pretty simple. Be an interesting guy. Take risks, massive risks. Constantly expose yourself to uncomfortable situations that force you to grow, build a successful business, or strive to reach a high level in your chosen profession. Commit to the development of a particular skill or skills and aim to reach the highest levels. Travel deep inside yourself to discover hidden truths. 